Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Email Validator plugin, which is a Bubble Publish plugin. Um, very straightforward, it lets you check to see if an email address is legitimate, if it exists. Um, really handy for when you're signing up users to make sure you don't get spam email addresses. If you need to send emails out to people, uh, make sure that you're um, you know, sending them to actual inboxes. So uh, this is how it works. I'm going to uh, I have an input here for uh, an email address, and if you noticed in the in the settings here for the plugin, or actually the, the, just the description, this feature is part of a data call. So you're not going to find this um, in your workflow actions anywhere. Let's see if I just pull up, you know, just any event. Um, you're not going to find it in your email list. It's not going to be anywhere here because this is a data call. It's not an action call. So uh, where you want to use this is as a part of a condition, uh, meaning uh, with the workflows, you only want it to run when an email address is or is not valid, or you, maybe you want to show an alert message or an icon if it is or is not valid. Uh, and I'm going to show you that right here. So I'm going to add a text element to my page. And let's say this text is going to say, uh, uh, this email is not valid, like that, and we'll make it red, danger, alert, warning, stuff like that. Uh, and this should only be visible under a specific condition, and that condition is the email address is not valid, right? So I'm going to make this text not visible by default um, and create our condition here. So this is where we're going to grab the um, verification feature. You'll want to go to get data from an external API because that's technically what, um, what this is. This is an external API call uh, to check for the email uh, validity there. Uh, when you select get data from an external API, you'll want to select your API provider because you might have multiple plugins that are all doing different API things. So I'm just, you can see that I have a whole bunch here. I'm just going to type in to quickly find, check if an email address exists. Notice that this API provider, that's, that's just the name of the call. So um, when in doubt, just look for um, however it's spelled out here in your plugin um, info area there. All right. Uh, so all we need to do to make this work is supply an email address, and that's what I've got this input here for. So I'll enter in the value of this input. And the result of this expression is either yes or no um, for, well, actually, you get two pieces of information. You, you see whether uh, an email address is valid or not. And you also see uh, if it is not valid, you get the reason why it, it's not valid, because there can be many reasons. It could be that um, the domain doesn't exist um, or the email address for that domain, the, the particular alias that you're using with the domain um, does not exist. Um, this will tell you, it, it will just give you more information. Now, if I were to leave um, this just like that. I wouldn't want to write this expression like this here for the condition, but let me actually do, I'm going to have a separate text here and uh, have that exact same expression that I had there. So get data from external API, check for an email, I'll insert my emails value and validate it. Okay, so this text is going to result in either yes or no. It, because it either is or is not validated. With the condition though, with my text here, I need this to, I want this to be visible. I'll add the property change for visibility. Um, only when validated is no. I have to specifically say I need it to be visible when validated is no because uh, having it just, you know, if you stop the expression here at validated, this is basically answering the question. It's saying yes it is validated or no it is not validated. And you'll see you know, when I preview the page in a second, this will be either yes or no. But this is a condition that I'm writing. So I have to complete um, that sentence. I don't even want to ask a question. I just want to say when validated is no, specifically no, that's when I want it to be valid. And what I can do is copy this condition um, and create a condition for the opposing um, side. So when validated is yes, meaning it is valid, 
uh, we also want it to be visible, but maybe I also want to change the wording. So I want to say this email is valid like that. And maybe I also want to change the color uh, so that it's green and positive. Okay, so it'll look, it'll look like that. All right, so I'm going to preview this page. Okay, um, here we go. Actually, let me, one more thing that I'm going to add to this before um, I preview is add another text below here so that we can see the reason uh, that an email address might not be valid. Now, you're only going to see something here if the email address is not valid. It'll be blank if it is valid. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see that the email is not valid. Why? Because there is no email provided. That makes sense. It's blank. So, um, and you can see here, uh, this was really just to show you the difference between um, having that expression stop at validated versus using that expression in a condition where you have to specifically say where, where validated is no or yes. So we can see right now that expression is, um, uh, the value is no currently, it's not valid. So um, I'm gonna enter in an email address that is clearly not valid and we'll see a different reason show up. Well, actually you can see what just happened right here. I have not entered in a domain yet and it's telling me, hey, this is not even the proper format for an email address. You have to do it in this format of user at domain.com. So I'm gonna enter in just kind of a crazy wild domain that we know doesn't exist and I will see what happens here. All right, so it's still not valid, but then we can see that no MX records um, have been found for this particular domain. Um, an MX record is uh, simply mail records that belong to the domain. It's not telling you whether or not the domain exists. It's just saying that it can't find mail records for that domain, all right? Now, if I type in something like gmail.com, which we know is a valid domain, um, I have a different set of reasons for why this email address is still not valid because test at gmail.com is obviously something that Google might have, you know, blacklisted as something, you know, no one can really own as their actual email address. So it's telling us that the account doesn't exist, nobody owns it, check for typos, um, things like that. Now, if I enter in something that uh, might be uh, more believable as a real email address, like a name and maybe a couple numbers like that, this is definitely passable. So this could certainly be someone's real email address. So we get this is valid. We don't have any reasoning because we don't need them. Um, and you can see now that the expression is uh, evaluating to yes here, right? So this is a super, super handy way to check email addresses uh, for when you're signing people up to your application or just if you need to email people in general, uh, just to make sure that you're not sending uh, emails to fake email addresses, uh, people aren't supplying, you know, spam addresses or fake addresses. Um, this will help you combat that and keep your database clean. So the place you really want to use uh, this check is most likely going to be in conditions, either on elements here like this, like I've done with this text element to let the user know, or directly in your workflows. Um, you know, if you had a button for signing up, and you had them enter in their email address, you could stop the workflow, add a condition to this workflow so that nothing even happens until they have a valid email address entered in there. So you could do only when um, check emails uh, address, and I'll enter in the email again here, validated is yes, right? So you only want this workflow to happen with your signup actions only if it's valid. All right, hope this was helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated with all of the tutorials. Thanks so much for watching.